most important aspects for women coaches is finding a mentor, someone to really help you to develop in your career. Andrea Williams, head women's basketball coach at the United States Air Force Academy, shared with us a lot about her experiences with mentoring. I think the concept of mentoring is um, available to us in many different ways. And I want to speak with you on three different ways that I think we need to use it. Um, I think it needs to be career driven for the person. Um, I think it needs to be peer driven then for uh, others to stay in the business. I think it needs to go in the direction of uh, then you're going to pass it on to your legacy or the generations um, that follow you or in this career. Um, I think mentoring is a very vital function in the business sense, in the corporate side of things, and then also we need to translate it into our profession. Uh, the more I've been around uh, different conventions and people, you need to start learning from other people and that guidance, you need that person in your corner, that ally. I think that is um, some of the true inspirations and definitions of a mentor. I think the first part of a mentor is seeking out a mentor for yourself uh, and being in the coaching profession. Um, you can do that one of two ways, um, usually formally, after you hear a great speaker or been inspired by somebody on TV or watching them. Um, most people want to pattern their behaviors, pattern their program after someone who's successful, someone who's influenced them and you've read an article or somebody who has uh, inspired them to think a little bit, oh, we're kind of on the same page, I like that. Um, and then also I think the lost art of with a lot of the news coverage, a lot of media, a lot of different tools available on the websites and on the web and internet, you have access to how people have reacted to situations. And I think that is a valuable tool also to use. So that's where you also could reach out to somebody and one, you could either formally send them a letter, email them, phone call them, or trying to find ways how to connect with them on the follow-up after hearing from them and they've inspired you. Uh, a lot of people also need that positive feedback, even if they're at the professional level um, or a level ahead of you or below you. I've had inspiration and great ideas coming from high school coaches. Well, this is what I do. I'm like, I've never even thought about that. Um, and so I think it's that where you need to stay in the game, ahead of the game, and aware of the game. Um, and as women coaches, I've, I've embraced and I think gone to the path of trying to really shape my career path um, some decisions business-wise or learning from others where I need to empower myself on the direction I want to go and where I want to be led to and where I want to end up with that, with that vision. Uh, I think so the formally trying to seek out one and um, those different avenues is one avenue. And I think the other part is the informal where you are going to uh, in a social setting or um, not necessarily by happenstance but you're going to develop that relationship um, and it formally evolves into being your mentor. And the one statement that sticks in my mind with understanding these concepts and also learning about it is when the person that you seeked out or that you think is their mentor, when they refer to you back as I'm her mentor or this is who I mentor, women's basketball coach Andrew Williams, um, I think that's the true two-way relationship, the two-way giving, um, the two-way support system that needs to be developed. Uh, I have I want to say two primary mentors um, and I use that because I will hit them hard with the good the bad and the ugly and the one definitely reminds me you you know you need to call more when stuff is good you can, <laughs> uh, because sometimes I need picked up and I'm like that is stuck with me and so one is a football coach uh, he is 15 years in the NFL and now he's in the college realm uh, this is the first time in over 15 years uh, and so recruiting rules have changed for him roles have changed for him but what led me to him is he stuck his head in my door one day at training camp he's like you're one of the few coaches in the office I'm like it's September I need to be learning it's August I get revamped for what we're doing and so we've developed that just little bit of conversation the first year of training camp second year let's get you out here on the field okay you're gonna let me stand on the field listen to how you talk with your players to your players instruct drills uh, the early practice session that you have, and he was a tight ends coach, uh, what he's trying to stress. Now I'm going to take some of those skills, take some of those drills, 
take it back to my guards because tight end and the guard, a lot of um, hand action and things. So a lot of things I can use in our press that we were trying to implement at the time and it was at the University of Tampa. Um, and just that sharing, that non-threatening way of sharing, uh, I think that's huge. And his willingness to share with me. I'm a Division II assistant women's basketball coach. He's at the peak of his game, tight ends coach for an NFL franchise. Uh, so I'm seeking out how he does it. And a position coach has the time. He worked for a great person who I admire. Um, one to pattern some things after him. You have to learn from others and how they do things, I think, and that makes you successful. Uh, so it was a great relationship to start that and understanding and the direction I wanted to go and how serious I was about my career in this profession because it is a profession to a point and we're dealing with student athletes and they're dealing with professionals but a lot of things cross a lot of fundamentals a lot of drill work a lot of same um, core values are still going to be taught at his level and my level and that was some of the things that resonated within me at the University of Tampa at the time um, and so that has evolved into a 15-year relationship um, and, I, and I laugh because uh, when he'd be in town, we'd be able to have lunch, and I knew what his off hours were, and it, it was sad and scary that I knew his hours. We knew when we'd be, be able to talk and teach me something, and it just started out with some lunches occasionally or a dinner if he was in the franchise of a different town when I was moving with my career um, when he'd have an hour for me at the hotel, dinner in front of everybody, um, meaning I would take my notebook. He's like, okay. give me." Sometimes I would give him a topic, what I'm trying to learn about, now, why do you do this when you have warm-ups out there? What's that drill for? Uh, what have you been tackling here? You guys have a top-notch wide receiver in your program now that you paid. Um, how's that dealing with some other issues and those high-profile um, celebrities that are athletes? How do you deal with that? Well, this is what we're dealing with. Um, so the give and take was huge. And he just laughed because one day I finally didn't take my notebook to lunch with him. He's like, oh, we're at that point now? Okay. You know, we can just sit back and relax and talk. And it was a lot of learning, my wanting to learn from him and how he did things and his willing to give. Um, and then it's funny because within the last three years, he's been um, thinking about becoming a head coach. When I became a head coach, it kind of motivated some of my other uh, peer mentors and him. Like, oh, she's really mean in business or, you know, trying to make that opportunity available or um, the possibility of that dream available and opening their eyes so they understood kind of where I was coming from and it was funny my parents came out to visit us um, at Air Force on the off day we're just watching football relax and he's calling me and he's like okay I have an interview at so-and-so college okay you got to walk me through the interview process I know how you are so it was like my agent he would do it to me I'm doing on to him um, and I've done that for a few other coaches um, numerous because you take the time you have to you have to prepare them but I thought that was the biggest compliment. My dad finally just looked at me and was like, this really <laughs> is kind of a great calling in your mentorship and what you like to do is give back and you'll take the one and a half, two hours to answer his questions because he hasn't been in front of an AD in a long time or hasn't had to present what he'd like his program to be or present him with some of those things to help equip him for a better interview and understanding. And he's and he's like, it's kind of cool seeing the wheels turn and my daughter is now talking to this person who's trying to become a coach. Uh, so it was, it's a great evolution. And I think, as anybody knows, that mentor relationship takes time um, and takes work to develop. The other mentor I have is a head men's basketball coach. Uh, he is Division Two. He's been at Division I. Um, and he knows how to keep a program running and sustainment and that high level of excellence. And again, we call him in that crisis crunch because he knows definitely the college landscape, uh, men's side, women's side. He understands administration, how to deal with both and managing up that uh, technique. And he just inspires me that you're to that point, you don't want to let him down also. Um, but he's got the right words to say, the right timing to say, when to say it, um, kind of like the uh, father-daughter effect. Um, and so, I knew that he was special in my development when I was a player. It was the first time, again, it's that instance when you kind of know and to help some of the people watching this video, he didn't ask to be a mentor. He didn't um, think he would ever be a women's basketball player's mentor or coach, but I knew how he handled himself with the guys team. That's who we always hung out with. And when we went to Alaska as a player my senior year, my dad had a chance to sit down with him over Thanksgiving dinner and I was at a player table. 
And so when your dad says, I really like what he's doing, what he's about, we might need to come to some men's game. That usually sometimes doesn't happen on the women's side and men's side and interested in his program. So that opens your eyes when your dad gives that val um, validation sometimes. And I knew what he had done anyway, uh, but he's a tremendous influence and um, he, he keeps us going, the group of us that keep continually reaching out to him. And again, it's more about who graduates from his program than wins and losses, how to manage a program, be successful, and he has been a tremendous influence. And that's in the, the college realm, and then you have, again, professional football league realm, how they do things. Uh, so those are two different mentors that give me two different things. So again, you're trying to reach out formally or informally. Who inspires you? Who do you read an article about? They handled a hard situation or in a public eye situation. And you can open that dialogue with them, I think, just by a quick note, an email, and then keep hitting them with it. And it'll hit them back that, okay, you don't want anything from me, but you're going to solicit my advice. A lot of people like to be asked their opinion. And if you value their opinion, it's going to be a great relationship, I think. There's two more aspects of mentoring, I think, that are um, part of the whole concept and um, scheme of mentoring. I think it's invaluable to have peer mentors, people of your own age or kind of that bracket, or same sport or same direction and career path that you're on. Uh, so you have a sounding board. And a lot of people have them. They don't call them mentors, but you do. I have three guys from the men's basketball side, Division I, that are my go-to guys. I call them my three wise men. Don't kid yourself. Um, they're invaluable. At that time, when I met them 11 years ago, it was at a convention, the BCA convention. And you're like, OK, they've got it going on. Uh, one has worked and won a national championship in the NIT as an assistant coach. Two different coaching styles that he's worked for. And then uh, at another school, he's had to deal with um, some controversy with their program or the university. So how you deal with that. So you need to take from that and um, ask questions and reciprocate. Again, it's you know 11 plus years relationship. And so you have somebody to have a sounding board, but the confidentiality is, again, the utmost and the key too. How much are they willing to give? How much can you share? And be respectful of that. So we've worked on that. Uh, the second is a person who inspired me because they were on a Division I staff, had two years in a row major upsets in the NCAA tournament. So I'm like, OK, now how do you guys get that motivated? How do you guys get that going? I'm intrigued just by being in the room with you. Uh, and then our careers have taken uh, different passing links where we've both been in transition at different times, and you lean on each other. Uh, and it's great inspiration for me. Um, and again, you have sounding board, um, another voice to have that reason. Um, how you're going to project your program when you get it. Now that I have it, it's a different role that we've taken on. And then the third of my wise men is a man who's dealing with the whole concept of being a single father while Division I and raising a daughter. So you're a single father to a daughter. Uh, so I think that's um, huge and a good impact. And then sharing from him, he'd been in the SEC uh, and he's worked with John Lucas in the private setting. So just trying to learn from them also and his experiences and bounce ideas back and forth again confidentiality is a key. I have them on the men's side because some of the things I like from the men's side and role modeling is good for our game and it is a business. They treat it like a business. Um, some of the things we bring and they don't understand, they garner from me and those are the phone calls I get. Uh, again, it's going to be how do you start that relationship, how do you develop it and one of them truthfully honestly was he looked at me and he is a black male married to a white woman and so they have uh, multicultural children, and I am of that same descent. And I was living in Indiana when he was coaching in Indiana, so that opens a big dialogue just to start with. And that's kind of that barrier that needs to come down. We have something in common. Uh, yeah, and then we also coach, and so helping him through that a little bit. So those are some of the keys, trying to um, let your viewers know or anybody watching that it's little things sometimes that can lead to that different relationship. And then besides the peer mentors, I have a group that um, when you're asked to be able to speak to a group and influence and people want you to expand on a topic, uh, I like that fact because I was able to talk to the So You Wanna Bees, as we call them. Um, it's a program run by the WBCA and the NCAA at the Women's Final Four. It is the top 50 applicants that have applied, exhausted their eligibility, and want to be in college coaching. They want to be in our profession. That's why we're here. So you need to inspire them. So this was the first year I was, able, was asked that honor to go back and give and present on recruiting 101, what would they need to know, 
Division one, two, or three nuts and bolts. Um, and my hour with them was phenomenal, inspired me. Uh, hopefully they were inspired. And then that's another set of mentors that I have. They're looking at me to be a mentor and I'm ment mentoring them, mentees. So I've started, and this is one of the things you just have to sit down and do, I've started my first ever um, online newsletter for them. And so I have a, I've done the PowerPoint and the whole thing. And so I have one section for them some of the things we reiterated that I talked about uh, at the program and directions and then that networking right here I've had in this conference three people looking for dobos or third assistants and I've got a list of ten that I have their contact information I've talked with them worked at a clinic with them that's that networking and door that's just open for them um, just with me being here trying to better my program and myself so that's that mentoring relationship that needs to continue uh, so I take that upon myself, and that's one of the pride points that I have. And the things I wanted to do is one of my passions where not just coaching has changed to the business side and taking care of the game and giving back to women's coaching, and I happen to be a women's basketball coach. The other side of that is I have more of the peer mentors that I mentored that were younger coaches. So Division three, Division two, II, Division one, some NAIA, and then anywhere from two to five years experience. And I started having dinners with them at the final four, just on my own, not a big budget. So, you know, um, small places to eat because you'd go to the final four and you wouldn't know anybody but other coaches in your conference or if you played with them, but they're not coaching. And how do you start networking? How do you just walk up to somebody? Um, <clears throat> and that's a hard skill for anybody. So we'll sit there and talk. And I'd been in it at that time, 10, 11 years, different stops. Well, this is what I learned here, and your sounding board for them with how they're dealing with their boss or their situation. Very confidential. Some very personal, private issues, but I tried to give them that, the concept of what their head coach might be thinking, because uh, I was a Division III head coach before, so had a little um, background. And then I think them sounding board, how we change some things, the perception. You know, we don't have football coach. How do I have a 48-hour visit for official visits? Why do you have 48 hours? We shortened ours at Jacksonville. That's what we did. This was our success. Well, we don't have a lot of facilities. We only have one gym. Well, so do we at Jacksonville. This is what we did. You know, we had a one-day elite camp. I don't need three days. Get them on your campus, talk to them, they get to know you. Just things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it was more of a sharing that way. So there's probably, it started out as five, and we've had five Final Fours, and now it's up to 27. And... I really cherish them sharing and being in an environment that's non-threatening. Um, and being a head coach last year is the first year I could take it up a level, take it up a notch, and in a roundabout way, uh, brought back my football mentor uh, in Indy. Uh, he was able to talk to my group and inspire them and just you cross those sports cultures. And it was a great relationship, a great um, feedback from the group. Um, and again, we have a dinner, we do it right, we share. We know it's confidential, but they have the email list and do some things, and um, they're starting to network in a non-threatening way. So that's part of the mentoring to give back. So those are two different ways. And then, um, again, other ideas that go along with mentoring and how do you do it. When I was the one named head coach out of our group, um, they were all beyond excited for me, wanted me to have success. And how are you going to do that? So I think I need to change the culture at Air Force. Um, how are you going to do that? And I think the big thing was I brought them all in for a retreat. All three of my peer mentors talked to my team. They told them and showed them on their laptops. This was our victory when I was at Vermont in the men's tournament. And our kids were like, okay. I, and I made them wear their rings, their championship rings. The other one, I've won a championship here, an NIT championship there. Here are my rings. This is what we're about. And so it kind of showed them who I associate with the level of expectation that we're going to start to grow here in a program. Um, and so it was good for them to see another group that was interested in them, and they will email them uh, throughout the season and inspire them. So it's a two-way street. It's giving. My team is getting great feedback from some uh, great coaches, and then one of them now is a head coach. So we've, it's his turn to have the retreat. Um, but again, at that uh, weekend, we had an hour practice because of NCAA rules. They all watched practice, critiqued it. We were able to talk and share. And then the next day we had dinner with the football guy because they happened to be in town playing Denver. Uh, so it's all a culmination and you really have to work hard at it, I think. You have to be invested in it and this is my passion. So I think it's some of the easy ways to do it. 
um, easy ways to open that door for people to do it, um, and you want to give back. So I think that's part of why I do it, why I actively work hard on it. Um, and in this business, you're going to need that network that will get you through and take you to the next level and then also celebrate you. So that trust is huge. Um, so those are the three different things, you know, a formal mentor, uh, peer mentors, and then who you do mentor, you're their mentor. Um, so it's a whole culmination of probably my 17 years of college coaching. Whew, uh, going strong, but it keeps me going, and I, I enjoy that very much. Once again, we thank you for joining us for this episode of The Real Women of Coaching, part of the Women's Coaching Network. In our next episode, we'll continue to speak with Andrea Williams on the topic of program promotion.